Um, today we're going to talk with, about exponential modeling with percent increase and decrease. And again, I'd just like to say that uh, what I really like about this unit is that it to covers topics that might be something that you can use in your real life. Um, eventually, on these problems today, we're going to talk about um, credit cards, I believe, and I think most people will probably have a credit card in their life if they don't already have one. So some things where we can actually apply it to our life instead of um, being so hypothetical. But exponential functions are very important in modeling a variety of real world phenomena because certain things either increase or decrease by a fixed percentage over given units of time. But before we actually get into that, I need to digress for a couple minutes and talk about percents. And um, by definition, a percent is defined as a fraction with 100 as a denominator. I actually often say that percent means out of 100. So to find a percent value means to multiply that value by that fraction. So first of all, if we take 22% and we rewrite it as 22 over 100, that 22 over 100 converts the 22% to a fraction. And then what we want to know is it says 22% of 80, of means to multiply. If we can type that into our calculator, And we have 22 over 100 times 80, which I think is going to give me a fraction value. And I'm fine with that answer. If you don't have the fraction button on your calculator, you can type it like this. 22 divided by 100, close the parentheses, times 80. And that's going to give us our decimal equivalent to that. 88 over 5 is the same thing as 17 over 6. Um, so either answer equals 88 over 5 or 17.6. But we can avoid the fraction. by using um, a decimal. And what happens here is when we have 22%, what we can do is we can take the decimal, we can take the 22%, and the decimal point in 22% is at the end of the number. And what we do to convert it to a decimal is we move the decimal two spaces to the left. So 22% is equivalent to 0.22. And then once we know that, how can we avoid using the fraction? We can convert it to a decimal. And then we calculate the percent. So it's 0.22 times 80. And once again, we already know what that equals. 0.22 times 80 should still give us the 17.6. If we want to find a percent increase, well, increase means that we're getting bigger. So what's going to have to happen is that we add the percent back to the original value. If we want to find the percent decrease, well, decrease means we're getting smaller. So we would need to subtract the percent from the original value. And this can be done in one step or two steps. And we're just right now getting some preliminary so that we can really do the algebra here in a couple minutes. For our purposes, it's going to be important to understand the one-step method, but the two-step method is still doable. If we look at this first example here, it says you need to pay 15% tax on a car that costs $12,000. And it says find the total cost 
after tax. Well, here's the first step method. We can, or the two step method, we can take 15%. With 15%, we would move the decimal two spaces to the left to get the decimal point, which is 0.15. And then we're going to multiply that number by 12,000. So the car costs $12,000, but the tax is 15% on there. We type that into our calculator, and we get 0.15 times 12,000 gives us 1,800. And that 1,800, that's the tax. We want to know how much are we going to pay total for the car. Well, we were going to pay the 1800 tax plus the $12,000 that our car cost. And consequently, when we total that up, we're paying $13,800 total for our car. And I bet that some of you figured that out before me, and some of you maybe even had to do that in your life because you've just gotten your first car. But there's a quicker way to do this. And what we can do is we can do this in one step. If we take the 15%, remember that's the tax, plus the price of the car. How much does the car cost? That's the full amount, 100%. And 15% plus 100% is 115%. And we can convert this number back to a decimal. Remember at the very end is our decimal point. By moving our decimal two spaces to the left. So this is really one once we calculate that value of 1.15, we're going to multiply that by the price of the car, which is the 12000 And look what happens when we type it in. 1.15 times 12000 gives us 13800 most people like to do things in one step instead of two. Both ways work. But there's the 13800 Again, we just saw the price of the car. The two step breaks it up into the parts. The one step, we just get the final amount. But let's try to practice using the one step method. And it says, use the one-step method of calculating the total. Write down the calculation as well as the final value, rounded to the nearest cent, because money is rounded to the nearest cent, which is two decimal spaces. And in this case, it says, we go out to a fancy restaurant, and the bill is $68. We want to add an 18%, we want to leave an 18% tip for the waiter. How much do we pay in total? Well, remember, the bill is 100%. And then the tip goes on top of that amount. If we add those together, we get 118%. But what we really want is the decimal value to that, the decimal equivalent. So we can move our decimal two spaces to the left, and we get 1.18. Once we know that, here's our calculation. 1.18 times 68, check, and we type that in our calculator. 1.18 times 68, and our total bill now with the tip 
is eighty dollars and twenty four cents. Vegan meals at Tofu for You are on sale for thirty percent off. The mixed Buddha bowl normally costs eight dollars and fifty cents. How much does it cost with the sale? Well, we like sales because sales mean we pay less money, hence the 30% off. But when we go to calculate this, it's going to be 100% minus 30% means that we're only going to pay 70%. Let's convert 70% to a decimal. So we're going to move our decimal two spaces to the left. And that gives us 0.7 or 0 0.70, whichever works for you. And then we want to figure out. Well, 0.7 times 850. There's our one-step calculation. And then here comes our answer. 0.7 times 850 gives us five dollars in 95 cents what we need to watch out for when we're doing these types of problems as we flip our pages over is whoops I'm ahead, I'm ahead I got one more example here but we need to watch out are we increasing or are we decreasing? So I'm a little bit ahead there with this third one, but like I said, probably in your lifetime you're going to have a credit card. And here's a situation at least that we need to be educated on. It says your current balance for your Visa card is $522. Visa charges you a percentage of the remaining balance each year in exchange for allowing you to borrow money from them called the annual percentage rate, APR. Your APR is 12%, which is a realistic number, might be a little bit low. If you don't make any payments this year and assuming there are no late charges, how much will you owe at the end of the year? Well, are we going to owe more or are we going to owe less? We're going to owe more. We're charging an interest rate. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out that we've got the 100%, and now we're going to add into that the 12%, which is 112%. And when we move our decimal point, we're going to move it two to the left which means we're going to be working with 1.12. 1.12 1 is the decimal equivalent to 112%. So we fill this in over here. It's going to be 1.12 times our bill, which is 522. And we type it in. 1.12 times 522. At the end of our first year, we're going to owe $584.64. And remember, that was assuming no late charges. And the, the credit card companies will charge you late charges. But now, if you continue to not make any payments, how much will you owe at the end of two years? Remember, this number, the 584.64, that's the end of the first year. So when we go to our second year here, we're still going to use the 1.12. But instead of 522 now, the interest that's being charged is being charged on this number of 584.64.
And I think what you'll see when we type this in is 1.12 times the 584.64 is that it starts to get expensive real fast. Now we owe 654.7968, but we're talking about money. And what we can do is I'm trying to draw that arrow to point to the six. Money is two decimal spaces. Because that six, that number six is five or higher, we need to round up. So when we write down how much we owe, it's going to be $654.80 because the 6 rounds the 9 to a 0, which rounds the 7 to an 8. So 654.80 at the end of the second year. We better start thinking about paying this back because it gets expensive pretty quick. Now that we've talked about percent increase and decrease and just the percentage in general, let's look at percent of increase or decrease over an extended period of time. Like we did in this last problem. We figured out the first year, then we had to use our answer from the first year in the second year. And there's two models. There's an increasing exponential model and there's a decreasing exponential model. By the way, we are not going to expect you to memorize these formulas. They will be provided for you, but you do need to know how to use them. And in general, what we give you is simply the formulas. We don't give you the fact that A parentheses T means the amount over a given period of time. And by the way, you don't have to use A. We oftentimes do, but it could be any letter there. The amount A parentheses T, the amount over a given period of time. A sub zero is the initial amount. It's the starting amount. P is the percent written as a decimal. That's why I've been trying to really emphasize that fact. And finally, T represents time. When you're looking at these problems, try to decide, are we increasing or are we decreasing? And that'll help you figure out which uh, formula to use. The nice part about those formulas is, is that we don't have to do the 100% plus the 12%. <coughs> that is within the problem already. That's the 1 plus the P part of the problem. So number one, write an equation that gives us savings in an account if $250 was invested at an interest rate of 3% per year. Then determine the total amount in the account after 12 years. Well, is this going to be an increase or a decrease kind of situation? And hopefully you're thinking increase because we're investing. So when we invest, we hope that we are going to earn some money. And that means that our formula that we're going to use is A of T equals A sub zero times 1 plus P to the T. What I find helpful, and you don't have to do this, is I like to write down what things are. So A sub 0. What is A sub 0? What's our starting amount in this problem? 250. P, our percentage. Well, in here it's 3%, but how do we write 3% as a decimal? It actually is 0 0.03. You have to move the decimal two spaces to the left. So it's 0 0.03. And then our T is 12. Again, you do not have to do that. It's just something that I personally find helpful to put back into the problem. But now we have 250 times 1 plus 0 0.03 to the 12, and then we can type it in. 250 times 1 plus 0 
carrot to the twelve. Once again, we need to round our money to the nearest hundredth. It's two decimal spaces. This says 0 0.440. So the zero is going to allow us to leave that as 44. Let's try another. If the population of a town is decreasing, well, nice, they gave us that value right away. We're decreasing. So in terms of our formula, then, this is the amount over time. In our original amount, this is going to be 1 minus P to the T. And if you find it helpful, list these as I do. Our original amount. 12,500 residents. It's decreasing by 4% each year, and we want to figure out the projected population in 10 years. We're going to round to the nearest whole number because we don't have par partial people. Our percent is 4%. Now remember, we need to convert 4% to a decimal, so we're going to take this and we're going to move it one, two to the left, which is 0 0.04. And then there's our time. Our time is the 10 years. And we fill it in 12,500 times 1 minus 0 0.04 to the T, which is 10. As we check it's in, 12,500 times 1 minus 0.04 carat, that gets your exponent there, carat, to the 10. Again, we're not going to have partial people. So I did 8,310 people. Some people might have rounded up. 8,310. I'm going to stick with it. But as we get close to finishing here, we want to look at this formula, these formulas, a little bit more closely. And we're given a specific one now. It says, given the exponential model y equals 200 times 0.8 to the x, determine whether the model represents exponential growth or decay. Then we want to state the percent increase or decrease as well as the initial value. Now this problem is a decrease. And the value that we're looking at is this 0.8. And it's a decrease because 0.8 is less than 1. So it's going to be decay. should have written decay. But decrease and decay, they go together. What is the percent decrease? Because it's not 0.8. Well, to figure that out, our percent decrease is it's 1 minus 0.8. Remember what a formula says? It says 1 minus or it says 1 plus. So this is 0.2 or if we put it in terms of percentage, this would be 20%. And finally, what's our original amount? The initial value in this problem. 
Well, there's only one more number. It's a little bit covered up up there, but it's 200. Let's try one more. We didn't have to solve this one. We just wanted to look at the particulars. From 1991 to 1995, the number of computers, C, for 100 people worldwide could be modeled by that formula of 25.2 times 1.15 to the T, where T is the number of years since 1991. Determine the initial amount, the percent increase or decrease. Well, what's the initial amount? Well, hopefully you know it's 25.2. Then, are we going to increase or are we going to decrease? Going to increase. And then we want to know how much is that increase. So we're increasing. To figure out how much we increase here, it may be intuitive, but if it isn't, remember our formula is 1 plus P equals 1.15. So we could subtract 1 from both sides. And we get P equals 0.15. And as a percentage, because there's the decimal, that is 15%. So finally, use the model to predict the number of computers per 100 people in the year 2000. Remember that T is the number of years since 1991. So how many years are they from 1991 to 2000? nine years. And then we can put that value back in. So it's 25.2 times 1.15 to the 9 and 25.2 times 1.15 to the 10. Sorry, should have been 9. 25.2 times 1.15 to the 9 gives us 88. We don't have partial computers. If you wrote 89, I'm fine with that as well. 88 or 89.